Hello, uh, this is Rick McMillan and I'll be talking to you about uh, video cameras, uh, security video cameras, specifically bullet cameras, uh, some that I bought from Citronics, and I'll be going over the basics of how to install them. I also bought a 8-channel uh, NVR that's network video recorder, and that's how I got these cameras. I got a DV, uh, NVR with four cameras and these are uh, 1080p resolution and um, they're a six millimeter lens that's the size of the lens that gives you an idea of the angle of view the smaller the number the millimeter the wider the angle of view and they typically go from about 2.8 millimeters all the way up to 12 or so and these are at six I think for my application, I might have been a little happier with like a 3.8 or a 4. One location I have this installed in where you have a pretty long view, 6 is just perfect. For the other areas, I bought a different camera, and that's basically what I'm going to be showing you here today. I actually have two of them. I've already installed one. This is a new one I just got today. This is the uh, Citronix CT. IPC-125C 1080PW and basically it has a 2.8 to 12 millimeter zoom lens it's 2.0 megapixels 1080p resolution now I'm going to be open, opening this up for the very first time but before I do that I just want to show you some of the basic features of these littler cameras that came with the uh, NVR basically they come packaged very well from the same company, Citronix. There's very little setup actually. When you get them, I think about all you have to do is install the antenna. Pretty obvious where it goes. And then here, these come with a power supply. There's basically two kinds of, uh, of these bullet security cameras. A lot of these cameras use power over internet, which means uh, if you use a switch that's compatible with power over internet, you just take your ethernet cable plug it in here, plug it in your power over internet switch and you have power and ethernet to the same plug. These don't have that, these have a separate power adapter which is fairly common. So for these you need a power adapter and ethernet cable. So you have two wires going into your house. Now if you're wireless, which is what I plan to be doing and actually have done, you don't need this except when you set it up. You will need this when you're setting up the camera initially because when you get these cameras the uh, wireless is actually turned off so you have to put in the wire go and change the IP address turn on the Wi-Fi capability of the camera set the, the Wi-Fi IP address and then you're good to go and you can remove this and you can put this camera pretty well anywhere you want in the house and you don't have to worry about the wire which is the whole benefit of wireless. The disadvantage of wireless are, are a couple of fold. Once, one, if you have a lot of wireless use in your household, say your smart TV, Netflix, uh, Fire Stick, uh, laptop, tablets, or cell phones, the more traffic you have on your Wi-Fi, the more it brings down the speed of your internet through those devices. So the more of these you have, the slower your Wi-Fi becomes. So that's the big disadvantage. Plus, there could be interference on the signal. So the signal could drop in and out. These antennas are, are typically adequate. I have investigated higher gain antennas, and they aren't very expensive. Uh, this one's like three, two or three or four dollars. Two dB gain antenna, I think, or three. This is, I think, a nine. Now you have to make sure you get something compatible. This particular one I have right here is not. It fits, but this is for a Foscam camera, and it has an Audi instead of an any connection here on the coax side. So you want to make sure that if you do get a, a third-party antenna that it is compatible with the uh, camera you have. Now this one's interesting because this is also like a 9 dB gain antenna. It has a magnetic base and it's got a little extension cable. And so what I thought I might do with this, and this is an any like it's supposed to be and it will work quite fine with this. The advantage of this is you can stick these on the outside of the house and then run the antenna through the window, hopefully not to cramp it too bad when you close it. 
and get it closer to the source of your Wi-Fi, therefore improving your Wi-Fi signal for that camera. So I kind of like this idea, this concept. Uh, it means you got two wires going into the house. Since I don't like drilling holes in my house except for the mounting uh, screws for this, for these devices, I'm running them through the windows on the second floor, you know, so, so they can't uh, be broken into, and I can still lock the window. Now, is that good for these cables? No, it's not because they're crimped at an odd angle. So I'm, I'm opting for the easy way of doing things. Wireless is easy. You don't have to run the wires through your house. But another option I've been using is this. This is a Netgear Powerline 1200 is what it is. What this does, this is a real in interesting device. <clears throat> and I have been using this in one case. Matter of fact, I unplugged this for this video so you could see it. Uh, this actually uses the power lines in your house in order to transmit your ethernet signal instead of having to run an ethernet wire like a cat 5 or 6 like you should have it will actually transmit your signal through the wires in the house and somehow they find each other I bought a two pack one of these plugs into where I have my router and the bottom has a ethernet connection and so I just Plug this into the wall, and you don't want to put it onto a power strip or anything like that. You want it directly in the wall as much as possible. I actually had to use a small extension cord about that long uh, for it to fit where I needed it to go, but it seems to work fine. So you plug one end of this into your uh, adapter, your Netgear adapter, in this case Netgear, and then there are other brands. And then this goes into your router or a switch box that goes to your router. The way I have it set up is going into a switch that goes into my router. That has to be done. Then on the other end, I take one of my cameras, and I have one in my garage, or on the outside of my garage. Garage. I plug this into the electrical wiring in my garage. There's a plug on the wall. So, And then I plug the Ethernet into it, and little lights light up that show the power is adequate. It shows that it found the other connection. And then when you put, put this in, your ethernet cable, and connect it to a device, it'll show your network. So there's three lights that tell you the status. I can put this anywhere I, can. I have a plug, an outlet plug. I love this so far. It seems to be working great. It seems The reason I put it in the garage is because my Wi-Fi, even though I could connect, it would drop out every now and then when I was in DVR mode. There are several ways you, you can use these cameras. One is, and probably the classic one you see, is a DVR, or in, the new term is NVR, network video recording, instead of digital video recording. And that is, they're running all the time, recording real-time video. All of your cameras at the same time. They're recording on a hard drive. Now that's obviously going to use the highest bandwidth, because you have all that information, all the video cameras being recorded, 24-7, so that's a pretty high drain on your resources. Another way you can use them, all these cameras typically have motion detection. And so if you don't want to run a DVR or NVR all day and night, you can set them up for motion detection. Now I have an old Fozcam camera that I've had on my front door of this house for about five or six years, maybe longer. It's, it's like 640 by 480 resolution. And that's all it's ever done for me. Use motion detection, start an action. And the action I have it set up for is for taking a snapshot or taking a picture. And actually the Foscam takes six pictures in a row of whatever that triggered that motion. Then what I have it do is email it to me. Now you can do other things. You can use file transfer protocol to transfer those files to your computer or, or whatever, I'm going to investigate the file transfer protocol. So those are kind of the two modes. Or you could just, you know, set one camera up and look at it through your computer if you want. Or you can set your computer as a NVR, DVR. So those are the, the different ways you can operate. So if you have an NVR, you're going to have very high bandwidth. That's why I'm really interested in doing this as opposed to the wireless. Now, I, can, I could do one or two wireless, maybe, and then do the other cameras uh, through this. The downside of having this uh, Netgear 
is the fact it's pretty expensive. It's like $35 to $40 a plug, something like that. So that's a pretty hefty price to add just for the convenience of the wiring. And you don't have the hassle of having to cut holes in your walls. Now I only have one of these hooked up, but it's worked flawlessly. So, okay, I've kind of given you an overview of how these things work. I'll show you, this is the camera I got um, recently. By the way, this camera, it's the uh, Citronix CTIPC 123C 1080PW. It's a six millimeter lens. So I got four of these with the NVR kit. And I have two of them already installed. And the reason I got this new camera is because it has the zoom feature, 2.8 to 12 millimeter and I wanted something wider angle than a six millimeter so that's why I got the camera I liked it so well I bought another one and so I'm opening it up right now for the first time so you can see it and you can learn from my mistakes and what I learned when uh, I was setting these up first of all there's like a overview guide little guidebook kind of takes you step by step on how to set up the camera the antenna that came with it get it a little bit of ethernet cable and you get some screws for mounting it to wherever you want to mount it and you have a power supply oh and one other thing very important you have a disc this disc has all kinds of information on it it has all these manuals and that's why i have these here just to show you all the information that you get on those discs so it's very important but it's also a lot to swallow, I'll be quite honest with you. All this information, <clears throat> installation manual for network, uh, facts for IP camera, wired IP or wireless IP camera, setup, that's I think probably the first thing you do is the setup, search, tool, user guide, device manage, operation guide. There's a lot of software that comes built into these cameras. These cameras, and you probably already know this if you're looking for a security camera, these cameras they have a computer built in and uh, that's why they have IP addresses. It's basically like a computer IP address and they have all the software built into the camera itself and that software is very important, it's very critical. And there's also software, as I mentioned, that comes on here. And the one that's most critical when you first set this up is Device Manager. Uh, it's also called IP Finder, but the, the latest ones I've gotten, they call it Device Manager. And what it does, these cameras are set to a default IP address. They even tell what it is here on the label. So when you plug it in, that's what the computer will identify it as. Then you use Device Manager to go in and find that, and then you change it to whatever you want to fit your scheme for your computers. So I can go in my browser, I can type in that IP address, slash port, and, or colon port, and then you got your camera comes right up and shows you whatever it's looking at. And you can also go in and configure your device through that uh, internet IP address. Okay, so that's the software and the instructions. They're all here. It's a bit confusing. That's why I'm doing the video, actually, is to help your process to be a little bit easier than mine was. Anyway, you can kind of tell the difference in these two cameras. Uh, the size is quite a bit different. This has a, a removable, adjustable hood. This one's fixed. Uh, it's a lot more massive type of device. You can see the, the mounting bracket is, is more sturdy uh, as needed for the weight of the camera. and may have a few more degrees of movement in it. The way you adjust these pivots, these turn, so you can move them in and out, and you can, you can twist them around, and then actually this will turn too on the camera. And you adjust them, it comes with a little Allen wrench for tightening them up once you get them in position. And as far as mounting them, wherever you want to mount them, uh, it's very simple, just place it where you want to place it, on something you can drill into, hopefully wood or siding, and just put your pencil in, mark the little holes, drill the holes, put the little green spacers in, hammer them in, and then 
drill the screws in to hold them in place and it works quite well. Something that this camera will do that this camera will not is zoom and manually focus. Now this is a fixed focus lens as far as I know. Uh, from what I've looked on on the internet for adjusting focus on a camera similar to these, if it's adjustable at all, you would remove the front cover to get to the lens and then you would rotate it left or right to improve the focus. I tried doing that with one of these. I don't think these, I think these are fixed focus lenses. You might be able to change the lens. I'm not sure. It unscrews. I didn't try taking it off, but it unscrews. So I know on some of these cameras you can change the lens. If you don't, if it came with a 6mm and you wanted a 3.8, you might be able to do that with some cameras. I can't tell you for sure on this one. <clears throat> but this one, you don't have to worry about it because you can zoom between 2.8 and 12 millimeters. So this camera should work for any application you might have, I would think, outdoors. This is an outdoor camera. The way that you adjust the zoom and the focus are these two screws, these two large screws here. So you don't have to take the camera apart, which is wonderful. I love that about this camera. But whenever you change the zoom, you probably are going to change the focus. So, because they, they're interrelated. So, you know, you have to play with it going back and forth to find the angle you want. And what I would recommend is you try to zoom it as best as you can figure before you mount. And then once you mount it, you may have to do a minor adjustment. And if you have to do that, what I was planning to do is use the... Uh, they have iPad and uh, Android software for your smartphone. It is X-M-E-Y-E. X-M-I. Anyway, it's a software that you can run on your cell phone that will allow you to look at your camera, at the feed that's coming out of your camera, or your DVR or NVR. This top one is my NVR, which is showing four cameras that I have connected to it already. This one is an individual camera I just added to it. I haven't even looked at it yet because I disconnected it for the net gear. So what I would do is if you already have it mounted, I would use this while you're out there next to the camera looking at the picture to adjust it if you can do that uh, to get the sharpest focus and, and the exact zoom that you want. And both of these are IR cameras, meaning these little LED lights surrounding the lens are IR uh, LEDs so that you can see at night. And it has what they call an IR cut filter, which is really nice because my Foscam, my old Foscam, does not have this feature. My old Foscam is sensitive to infrared, which is good at night because it makes it a lot easier to see things in the dark because there's still heat being given off. And these LED, IR LEDs, or like a flashlight at night, even though they aren't obvious, like they would be with uh, regular light. You might notice a faint red glow on these LEDs, but nothing real obtrusive like a floodlight or anything going on all, all the time. The bad thing is, on the infrared sensors, is the colors aren't true. They're kind of a, a washed out pinkish black and white color. On the Foscam, greens look pink. So there's no true color, you, you can, it, they're weird colors. With this, these new cameras nowadays, they have the IR cut filter, which means it, during the daylight, once the, it senses that it's bright enough, it puts a filter in to cut out the infrared. Then you get true greens and blues and reds and yellows, and you get a real nice pretty picture. Then at night, it takes that filter away, and at least as, as I understand it, and then it's more of a black and white photograph, but it's really bright. Uh, it looks like daytime to me on these cameras. So that's the reason for the LEDs is so that it, they can see at night. These power supply cords aren't very long. They're pretty short. And you can also get a regular extension cord, but they also make extension cables for these power supplies. Just make sure you get the right size. I think this is 2.1 millimeters. Don't get the one point something. I think that's the Foscam size. I believe this is a 2.1. This is a 12 foot extension cable. I got two of them for like 
seven bucks or something like that. It's not too expensive. And I'd rather put one of these, if I'm going to put something through the uh, window and risk breaking a, a wire, I'd rather do one of these rather than the one with the power. Now I have also bought uh, additional additional power supplies in case I do break one of these. They're like 12 volt 1 amp. They're 12 volt 1 amp power supplies. So if I do break the wire to one of these or mess it up somehow, they're not very expensive to get replacements. And I guess that's it. Now that I've given you a little overview on how these cameras work, I have taken my camera and plugged it into my network uh, through a switch box that's sitting on top of my, my NVR, uh, so it's handy here in the room. I have installed Device Manager, which we'll be using first, and CMS, and a couple of other programs I haven't really used yet. Device Manager is what you need to set up the Systronix uh, video camera IP address. So double click on that. It comes up blank. You click down here on IP search. See what comes up. Find your camera. Your new camera should be IP address 192.168.1.10. Click on it. Click on the box. Then IP address is here at the top that you just clicked on. Change it to whatever you want to change it to so that you can have unique uh, IP addresses and HTT port. I also change that at the same time so that they match. Then click modify. And so it can no longer find the device because I just changed the IP address. So I'll give it a few minutes to reboot. I'll click IP search again, see if the new IP address shows up. And there it is. So I click on it, everything looked good, then hit advance. When you go into advanced, you have your DNS 1 and 2 settings, uh, phone info, I'm not sure exactly what phone info that is, that may be for the cloud, I'll look more into that later. Don't know what DDNS is, uh, I'm not that much of an expert. Go into Wi-Fi settings, click on it, you set the IP address for your Wi-Fi. Enable your Wi-Fi settings. Set the IP address to be something different from the wired address. Search for your network. You should find it. Wow, it found all kinds of them. Uh, click on your Wi-Fi. Uh, provider or your your router's Wi-Fi uh, SSID type in the password click OK then save then do another IP search and your what after you give it a few minutes to reboot and your new IP address for your Wi-Fi should show up and I can see it right now, so I'm in good shape. Now that I have my IP address set to a unique IP address for my camera, I can go to my Internet Explorer browser, and it has to be Internet Explorer, you can't use other browsers, my understanding, to log into the camera directly. And so I type in the IP address up at the top. If you want, this to work flawlessly one of the things you'll need to do is, is go to your tools go to your internet options or compatibility views uh, settings and I go I add this website to my compatibility view that will make sure it works just fine on this uh, browser and be sure and set your language to English that's the first thing you want to do then you can log in and that there it is click login you can see it has a view of my house now from the inside it's sitting on top of my desk so go into device config it's a little menu up here go into settings system settings 
I would take a look at general and this is what general looks like you can set the time and the reason this is already set is because the first thing I did was plug it into the NVR and the NVR set that for me and I think actually when I first looked at this it had the image flipped but the NVR apparently fixed everything that was wrong with the camera it knows it's central daylight time um, your date format language I would set your language too here at the camera so that anytime you use the camera it will know it's English so the date time make sure that is correct time zone and click OK so there was a few things that needed to be set I'm gonna have it restart back to device configuration back to settings next thing we'll look at is encode and this camera has 1080p for the resolution 25 frames per second uh, quality good frame interval 2 all that looks good we'll just cancel look at the network I'm not using DHCP enable because I'm giving unique IP addresses to my cameras and everything looks good here transfer policy says quality preferred could be adaptive there's other options I'll just leave it on default for now network services if you want to set up an email account uh, the, the or email server this is where you would do it and I have done this for my motion detector alarms I will enable this put up a mail server and username password and title for each message and I won't do that right now but that is where you would do this here also has FTP which I don't really know how to do this just yet but it's something I'm kind of interested in uh, anything else the rest of these I really don't know much what they do or what they're good for the um, alarm settings this is where you'd set your motion alarm or if you wanted to take a picture a snapshot uh, you would click enable click snapshot and then send email if that's what you want to do or FTP or it gets a buzzer or, or write log those are the options that you have and I'm not going to set those up right now but I am using those on other cameras they work out pretty well uh, and if you want to set up a snapshot you would do it in here and I'm not sure what pre-snap pictures means I guess maybe that takes two pictures at a time emails them separately because each email I get only has one picture attached to it you would click timing and then the, these three boxes would be checked for setting up a snapshot so that's and record would be for your hard drive if you're doing that some kind of hard drive other than the NVR for the NVR you don't have to worry about setting this up it kind of takes care of itself this is PTZ which is pan tilt zoom none of my cameras have that function it does have a zoom and a focus but they're both manual in the camera that I just set up so these have no functionality at all whatsoever there's no motorized zoom or motorized focus. Because it's replacing camera 2. Go into device configuration. Go to system settings. Go to GUI, GUI display. Then up here at the top they have camera name or cam name. So click on that and you can fill in the box here to whatever you want. I have it set for 2, set it to 3, and down here you can see what, what it's going to display on the screen. And it shows camera 02 because I haven't saved it yet. It still shows camera 2 and the date up here at the top. Should be good to go. Okay, one of the things I thought I would do is show you my NVR just briefly. I've already set it up. It did not come with a hard drive, so I installed one. I have a picture of how it looks 
basically you just screw it in and plug it in after you take the top of the case off it's real simple to add the hard drive uh, I built computers so it's certainly no big deal to me uh, a lot of NVRs or DVRs come with hard drives built in so you don't even have to do that on the back of this device it's very simple since it's made for uh, wireless cameras uh, there's the uh, white Ethernet cable that goes to my switch box you can see it blinking at the top I have the uh, VGA cable that goes to my monitor there's a power connection in the back and there's a couple of USB ports it came with a mouse a USB mouse so instead of that I got a wireless keyboard such as this with a touchpad on it and that's where I put my uh, USB port in the back the wireless connector in the back so I now have a full function keyboard and a touchpad mouse and so I don't have to worry about this being connected so it's kind of up and out of the way so it's very simple uh, everything's done through the uh, Ethernet network on, in your house this box did come with a remote control which I haven't even opened since I have a keyboard in addition to the wired mouse. This purple cable is going to my router. This blue cable is going to my Netgear uh, 1200 device that uses my wiring in my house to connect my other cameras. In fact, I'm going to connect all my cameras this way except maybe for one or two. Uh, so I'll have three cameras connected with this at least. So that has all that traffic going through here and this goes to the DV or the NVR itself and there is no on or off switch you plug it in and it turns on I really don't like that I wish it had an off switch for okay here is the startup configuration you see it's already seeing the cameras that I have uh, plugged into the network and it's added this new one over here on the top right by itself actually it has the same IP address as an old one I'm replacing that doesn't have the same features as this one so it has a wizard that comes up and pass uh, username admin no password at least right now click OK so it logs in there's the time and date information and since I logged that camera in once before it knows English, it knows all of these things, which is good. Next, it tests all these things to make sure everything's good. Then these are the codes for the uh, Android or iPhone apps. Here's the scan for the device itself. And then it allows you to auto-connect with IP addresses if you want to. What I did was I set all my IP addresses up manually so I know they're unique and I can get to them directly on the internet if I want to. But you don't have to do that apparently. You use the, the NVR, it will set everything up for you, which is nice. And this is how you set up your uh, pictures. Uh, see, it's showing four, a configuration of four windows right now. And and these are the ones it's it's showing up here at the top and what you do is click on the one you want to add if you want to add it click on the window you want it in now this is still showing uh, the old IP address so maybe I want to change that to the new one alright I'll go ahead and add them in the order I want Number one, add. Number two, add. Number three, add. Okay, I have them all added the way I want them. Click next. And that's it. Everything's all set up. It's recording. And if you decide you don't want them to record, you just double click and it quits in that window. You want it to start up again, double click it again and this DVR or NVR has eight channels that you can add to it. Now if you want to make any changes in the NVR 
right click and then this is using the keyboard go to the main menu and you have all these options here you can set alarms which I do have some alarms set for channel one uh, I have metal sensitivity I have it to show a message whenever it detects could have it send an email or something like that but I don't have that right now so it will show a message whenever I get any motion in channel 1. Now channel 2 which is the new camera I just installed I don't have anything so I'm going to go ahead and enable that with lower sensitivity so I don't get too many messages and I'm just going to have it show a message and then window number three I already have it set for middle okay system settings okay if I want to change something okay on channel one I have it set for 1080p which is good which is what I want channel 2 1080p channel 3 1080p so they all have the same settings which is good alright so you can make some changes in the directly in the NVR as well as directly in the camera since the camera has a computer built into it with all these things there's a lot of other things here you can change I don't if you want to change the time, you can do that here. And there are other things you can do. And I'm no expert, so I really can't delve too deep into this. So that kind of gives you a rough idea how to use the NVR. Right now it's recording. If I want to uh, I want to play something back, I go to playback. And this shows the uh, video. It only shows two channels at a time. Here's the calendar. Here's how many days I've been recording. Say I go back, I want to go back to the 14th. So if I wanted to look at uh, channels 2 and 3, here they are. You only play back two channels at a time. So here I just click on the time of day. And now it's playing those two channels so I can see what's going on uh, at that time of day on those two channels. So it's playing those both back in real time. If something ends up being stolen and you have an idea of when it is, you can go back and look. Or you can set up motion alarms that will alert you that some activity is going on. I'll tell you how long that motion was detected. It can either just send you a message and the message is done to the NVR or it can send a snapshot which is actually done to the camera. I don't haven't figured out how to send a snapshot to the NVR yet but you can set that up through the camera itself directly. By the way here's the motion detection I just set on camera number two which is that one. Uh, you can see that the alarm has already activated and it shows us camera 2 motion detected and it just I have it to where it'll stay up uh, you can set it for 5 seconds 30 seconds or indefinitely that for this alarm status me uh, message to stay up okay I wanted to show you some of the uh, software that comes in the uh, disc that you get with the camera or and or the NVR you have the CMS software and user manual. The user manuals are very good, uh, very detailed. Um, so the CMS software is like a DVR or NVR software. It runs on your PC. So if you're not getting a NVR, you can use the CMS software. And I'll show you that in a minute. It's a really quite good device managed tool that is the IP uh, search tool. That's very essential for setting your cameras up with. Uh, unique IP addresses and turning on the Wi-Fi uh, the player I guess is for playing back I haven't really used that yet for playing back your uh, video once it's been recorded 
The Internet Explorer ActiveX controller is something I hadn't mentioned earlier, but it should be necessary to install the ActiveX controls in Internet Explorer in order to open up your camera through the IP address of your camera. You need to install the ActiveX controller first. Password reset tool I haven't needed yet, so I'm sure that could come in handy at some point if you need it. Uh, installation manuals, again, IPS quick guide. Megapixel guide to, like I said, there's all kinds of guides here. Wired IPC setup are everywhere. So that's why I did the video to try to make things a little easier. This is the CMS software. I wanted to give you an idea of how it works. Uh, it's very similar to the NVR software. Uh, I already had the setup for the three cameras I have outside. I, I'm going to set up a fourth one for the interior of the house. I haven't done that yet. Uh, you see these two cameras are the more expensive cameras that I bought extra with the 2.8 to 12 millimeter zooms. I had them all the way out on wide angle at 2.8 millimeters because I really like the very wide field of view. I can see a big area. I've got overlap. You can see this sidewalk is in both cameras. So anybody walking up to my house, I've got a nice clear view of them uh, and a nice view of the driveway. I even go into my neighbor's yard a little bit and uh, on both sides actually. So I really like those cameras for the wide angle. On the one on the right, I adjusted the focus a little further out. And I don't know if you can tell, but these bushes right below the window are a little bit out of focus. So I may adjust that to where that's a little bit sharper close in. But I still want to see as far out as I can. The problem is with the motion detection is cars trigger the motion detection real easily. So if you don't want to take pictures of cars driving by your street, which I've done a lot of, if you use that snapshot feature, uh, you might want to make sure your camera's not looking at the road too much. Even camera number three, where it's a long ways off, I get a lot of headlights coming towards my driveway. Anyway, this is how it looks. It's really nice. Uh, so if you wanted to do this instead of buying an NVR, it's certainly an option. I just didn't want to tie up my computer and my hard drive doing this. If you want to add cameras, what you do is go to, this comes up of course without any cameras, go to System, Device Manager, and then what you would do is add an area, call it Zone, we'll call it Zone 5. I don't know what Up Zone means. And so see, I just added Zone 5. So I can add a device, I would do an IP search, select from the IP, uh, add a password if I have password protected, which I've done with my cameras now, and would recommend you probably do the same then click OK that would add that camera to this port okay I'm gonna show you how to add a camera by doing that I'm gonna turn off zone 3 so I'll go over to camera 3 double click on it and voila it's turned off so next thing I do I would go to system device manager and then I would click on zone 3 and I would do add device. Let's say I've done that. I've added camera 3. Normally that would be the IP address, but I, I put names there instead. And then all I have to do, okay, zone 3 is there. No camera showing. I double click on it. The camera shows up. Then I have to double click again on camera 03. And then you see camera 03 showing up and I got to double click on that. Then there's my picture. That's just kind of a brief overview on the CMS software and how it works. It's pretty simple. You can see over there, you can see over here, this is what my NVR looks like. It's very similar. There's my NVR. It looks very similar. I have the camera set up the same way. I'm using the NVR so I can uh, do live full-time video recording and go back and replay any particular minute from any camera that I want. And at the same time, I'm using the individual cameras, using the motion detection feature to send me an email with a snapshot picture of any movement that it finds. And I'll show you a few examples of that.
Okay, I thought I'd show you some examples of screenshots that are taken with the Systronix uh, security cameras. This first one is an older one of my front yard uh, camera one view with a 6mm lens. The very next one is 2.8 millimeters, and you can see the huge difference as far as the field of view. It's much larger uh, field of view than the 6. We'll go back to the 6 real quick. You can see how, see the tree. You can just barely see the base of the tree. Here you can see all the way to the flower bed up against the house. So this is a much wider uh, angle of view. Here is a nighttime shot. You can see the difference. There is it. There it is in color. There it is in infrared. Pretty much has the same field of view. Looks a little weird with the uh, circles around it. And then this is the screenshot as you see it on the computer screen. You can see it's much larger than the little snapshot that you get. So the snapshot's not quite the same size as the view that you see when you're looking at a live view of the uh, camera itself. And here is the second camera, uh, Zone 2, uh, with a 6mm lens. There it is with the 2.8mm lens from the zoom camera. You can see that's a huge angle of view. You can see all the way to the flower bed up against the house, uh, the full tree. There we are back and you can just see around the base of the tree with a 6mm. So some cases 6mm is fine, but for the narrow width I have for my front yard it wasn't enough. So I like the 2.8 much better. There's the night view uh, snapshot and it was activated by a car. You can see the headlights of the car shine on the front of the yard. And then there's camera 3, zone 3. I'm carrying out the trash during the daytime. Looks pretty much the same at night. Very nice bright uh, IR view. Looks almost like daytime. And here's a picture of my old FOS cam. This is what I upgraded from. Uh, this is during the daytime and there's no true colors because the infrared is on all the time. They don't have the infrared cut filter on these old cameras. That's much, much, much better at night and that's much, much better during the day than what I had.